Last time on Thrill Ash Create, we killed a couple of cows, did some interior decorating, and built an absolutely beautiful train depot. Today, we finally tackle our wood farm, extend our train loop, and build a rustic lumber mill. Let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of Create, and look at our little train go. Oh, I got a driver, we got a schedule and everything in there. Oh, I'm so excited. It's, it just... It makes the, the place seem more alive. I'm super excited about it. And you guys might notice something else different. That's right, I have a new skin. I have a new skin. Thank you so, so very much. To one of my patrons, Dusk, thank you, thank you, thank you for making this skin for me. It's it's literally perfect. I love it so very much. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to turn the goggles on. So now I have goggle goggles. <laughs> I think it looks so silly. Anyways, thank you so much for this skin. It's incredible. I've been playing a lot of Morrowind, so I keep trying to right-click in order to open the inventory. That's not how this game works. Anyways, folks, we have done just a couple things off camera, and the reason for that is I've been sick. You might be able to tell in my voice here. I might just start coughing during recording, so if things get a little more jumbled up than usual, that's why. But yes, we've only been doing a couple things off camera. For example, like I said, we have the train that's going around now. I actually went over to the jungle that's off there in the distance, and I I grabbed a monkey and I put it in the, the driver's seat there, gave it a little schedule, and it's dropping weed off and picking up beef and dropping the beef off over here. Uh, and I think it's picking the weed up from over here as well. And what else does it do? Oh, it's grabbing experience, and that's something that I wanted to talk about. I don't think I even gave a name to the monkey. Let's see if we can catch the monkey here. Monkey! Hi, little buddy! You're doing great, man. Everybody loves you. Anyways, uh, so... I had a bunch of comments in the last video about the experience in this tank. Now, it turns out the experience of this tank, because it's coming from a backpack, isn't actually usable as, like, quote-unquote, normal experience. So I literally just <laughs> did this, like, <laughs> air quotes. So essentially what I need to do is figure out a way to make this usable as normal experience if I can. And I don't, I don't, I don't honestly know how to do that. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little bit of research on this in the meantime, and I'll try and figure out how we can use this as normal experience if we can. If we can't, hey, no big deal. We can use that uh, for, for like, I think the enchantment industries or the create enchantments or something like that. I don't really know. But today, today, what are we doing? We are going to be going right over here and we're going to make ourselves a wood farm. Now, before all of you were like, oh my gosh, throw lash, what about that dwarf area you were going to make? I'm, I'm working on it, guys. <laughs> I'm working on it. I, I have a lot going on in life and I'm trying to dump some things in my life so I can focus more on these videos. And it's, it's becoming difficult because I'm a people pleaser, I don't want to upset people, and I do enjoy the other things that I'm doing, but I'm working on it. Uh, the, 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 this stuff here has just been like, erect a building and kind of just build it however the heck I want to and make it look, you know, wonky and weird, and it turns out okay. The dwarf stuff needs to be like, planned, and I don't get a lot of free time in order to do stuff like that. So I have been half taking free time to plan dwarf things and half taking free time to record and half taking free time to play some video games other than this and it's you know it, it's difficult so we'll get to the dwarf stuff don't worry and as we head over this way and we kind of figure out what the heck we're gonna do uh there is something else that i had been thinking about and that is making a new series that's right we just reached a thousand days in this one please go check out the thousand days episode it should be over up in the top right and i keep getting a lot of questions on how x works and how y works and how you get z out of the equation here and listen i love me some math but obviously people are asking questions on how to play create. Now, one of the biggest things that I really enjoy and love doing in, in life is teaching people things. So I had a nifty idea, if people want to be taught so much about create, why don't I do a series on how to play create, like how to how to get started and, and you know, do all the crazy things that I'm doing over here and, and how you can start your create career, essentially. Really, the only issue that I see with that is new things are scary. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm unsure if there's going to be a huge need for it because let's be honest here um, Y'all are, are really enjoying these videos, and I'm really enjoying making them and making new stuff is There's my vein mining axe making new stuff is um, Is is new right? That's super new and it's super scary And I'm sure a lot of people are gonna enjoy it, but at the same time like I'm I'm getting a lot of fun and success doing the thing that I'm doing now, so changing up what I'm doing is always a scary thing, because what if people don't don't want to watch it as much as what I'm doing now, etc, etc, and I, like I said, I don't really have a ton of free time, so it's something that I've been thinking about, 
Uh, you know what I'll do? I'll post a poll. Can I do polls on YouTube? I'll try and post a poll or I'll post something in the comments. Uh, fill it out. Let me know if you're interested in a create series kind of akin to if you've ever seen Pixar Rift's survival guide series. I'll do like the create guide create survival guide. We'll, we'll figure out a name but yeah fill out the thing in the in the description um and uh, you know depending on interests i'll go ahead and start crafting ideas and how that'll work well that's a nice big blank slate i think and i think there's a raccoon friend over here there is just chilling so essentially more or less what i want to do is those same spinning machines that we had over here just over here and I, you know i'm the only person that's playing in this world so i ha already have like tens of thousands of of wood oh thank you this is very helpful you know so i i don't really need much more than what i already have i mean this one i i kind of do need some more Ooh, punching things gives me gives it to me so yeah i mean i i do need a little bit more of some things but this is kind of like more than enough <laughs> i cleared this much out just so i could decorate more or less is what i'm trying to say here the mangrove is going to be a pain though because it's going to need a huge arm that just keeps sweeping and sweeping so yeah the mangrove might be a problem but at the same time i don't think it really should be if i just give it a massive space like towards the back or something like that it should be okay but yeah i'm just gonna get a couple of those spinning machines in here get it all decorated and then around about here ish is where i'm actually going to build like a like a wood shop, more or less. I'm gonna, I want like a, oh, what are those things called? They're like gigantic spinning blades that cuts up logs of wood as they, as they go through a mill, a wood mill. And that might be what it's called. But essentially I want one of those things and we might process some of this wood here. Uh, I think there's a way in Create we can like automatically strip the wood and, what is this? Oh, <laughs> a maggot died in the bush, nice. Or a fly. <laughs> you can you can have that back. But yeah, I think there's a way in Create where we can like auto strip some things and, and do all that sort of stuff. Now, there's a part of me that also kind of wants to incorporate some sort of leaf harvesting apparatus. But at the same time, leaves are pretty easy to get, especially with vein mining. This pickaxe right here with silk touch and vein mining on it, I can just snag leaves off of any tree so it, leaves aren't too horrendously difficult to get so i don't really think it's worth it but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and start doing a little bit of decoration and we'll 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 figure some sort of palette out Folks, if you ever want a place to look dirty, Podzol. God, that was so close to my face. Anyways, uh, we just planted a bunch of two tall spruce trees, Podzol all over the place, a little bit of grass here and there. Speaking of which, just trying to keep the texture up with a little bit of grass. And yeah, I think this is going to be perfect for a wood yard. Now, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. And I don't believe any of our machines are going to take up this much space. And that's okay. I'm not super worried about it. But what's going to be nice is the decoration is going to work out very well because I kind of want this to look like a, a like an old growth foresty type of area and hide the tree farms inside of that. It's going to be a little bit difficult because the trees might connect to some of the other trees that we're chopping down. So we'll get some weird leaf issues, but I think it'll be okay. And I actually put this in a terrible spot. Now, something that I have been thinking about here is where our train is going to go. Speaking of the devil, so let's bear in mind that this is going to be our stone quarry, right? Our stone quarry, which is going to have a drill that goes directly down to the center of the earth, and we're going to move our mine from over there to over here. So if that's the case, then this train can't go through this area the way that it is right now or the way that it looks like it would be. So what I think I have to do, and let me just get out of the way so I don't get run over by the crazy monkey here, is I think I have to take this and actually have it hug the side of the pond. 
and it'll come around this way and then turn over here. And the reason for that is we can have the, uh, either the, the, I cannot remember the name of this thing, the logging camp, the, the gigantic saw building? I don't know what to freaking call it. Anyways, we'll have that thing, you know, sitting about here-ish or over here-ish, and the train will pull up to that logging thingy and then pull off in this direction and kind of like snake its way around this way and come back, or I might build up this area a little bit more and have the train just like go here. Right? I don't know, I, got, I gotta I gotta work out exactly how we can have this thing bend and move and stuff and grab a couple of blocks. I might just have to try it out and see what works and what doesn't. But in the meantime, I want to set up a couple of these uh, little spinny thingy-mahoogers. That's a technical name, thingy-mahooger. Yeah, I want to get a couple of these set up and I think the one that I want to start with is mangrove because like I said, I think that's gonna be the biggest one and I want to hide it like all the way in the back corner because it's the tree that really doesn't fit for this area at all. So I, I think like putting it back here in the back corner is going to be really great. I have this thing just a spinning around in this huge wide arc. I don't know the size of mangrove, like what the, the largest size is. But yeah, we'll have this thing just a spinning around. Hopefully it grabs everything. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, then eh, well, we'll fix it, I guess, later. <laughs> Alright, I think this should be big enough for the mangrove. I So I... <sighs> I read on the wiki that mangrove can get like 13 by 13 by 18 or something like that, which is just insane. That's absolutely ridiculously insane. But I remember that these mechanical saws, if they chop one piece of the mangrove root that's touching the ground, the whole tree comes down. So this should be more than enough. Essentially, I put this in here. This whole thing starts spinning around. I'll close this up. And there's another piece of puzzle that's right underneath. I think it's right there. Yeah, it must be right there. And this thing spins around and around. And when it comes around this way, it will dump all of its goodies. This is not a chute, but it'll dump it into a chute. And everything should go up to the little... I keep poking over here. It could be over there. The, the little milling area. Mill! Is it a mill? I think it's a mill. The, the wood mill thing. I'm still second guessing myself on that. Anyways, uh, yeah, so this thing I think should do us for mangrove. It's not nearly as big as I made it. I think I made it like 10 blocks long or something absolutely ridiculous. But this should do us. Now I'm wondering, do I, do I make two tall... Or, or two wide, two by two uh, pine trees. Spruce trees, that's what they're called. Do I, am I gonna do that? If I did do that, where would I do it? Because these guys here, these Christmas tree ones, they get really wide. Am I gonna do that? Ooh, see, we've got a mangrove tree, mangrove tree that grew already. And I think, here, let's try it, let's try it. Now, if we just turn this on, it should swing around, grab one of the roots. There we go, all right, cool. So yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on this one. Mangrove's a pain in the butt to, to try and harvest. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Ow, or at least to harvest automatically without like an absolutely enormous uh, system to, gondola system to just go back and forth. Mangrove's a pain. Mangrove is indeed a pain, and you know what else is? Being so sick that you forget to unmute your mic. <laughs> now, it was a few days ago that I recorded this clip here, and there is absolutely no audio to it whatsoever. So what I'm guessing I'm doing is going around and showing you where I'm actually going to put the different farms and how they're going to work. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, let's do a little time lapse of me building all these things. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, here's, here's a time lapse of me building all these things.
Ooh, ah, isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's so pretty. We got a little forest going on here. Don't worry, I'm gonna make the grass look like grass. But this is so cool. They're all chugging along and harvesting way too much wood right now because I don't have any of the drawers hooked up. They're just sitting on top of the portable storage interfaces. Anyways, if we fly up just a little bit here, you can see them all churning away and our frames are gonna drop dramatically once this one gets harvest. There it is. All right, yeah, we got a little tiny hitch. There we go. So, uh, yeah, we, they're, they're all churning away, they're all doing their thing, and I gotta be honest, this is gonna be way more wood than we'll ever need. We might have a couple of issues here with the acacia, because I think their leaves are gonna get caught on some of these trees. I actually, whoops, I do that all the time. I actually think those are acacia leaves right there, certainly are, uh, but that's okay, we'll just come back, we'll keep an eye on that. Anyways, what we have to do next is, uh, a lot, <laughs> we have a lot to do next. We are going to go ahead and take our train track and we're going to loop it around this way and have it stop at a lumber mill. Yeah, lumber mill. I, th I think it's called the lumber mill. <laughs> and the lumber mill is going to be gathering all of these bits of wood in a drawer system that is underground. So we need to make some drawer controller slaves and hook them all up to the drawers that are going to be in the lumber mill. And then those drawers are all going to go on the train. So we're probably going to need like... 17 different train stations to pick up all the different types of wood so the train can loop back around this way connect with the track and go wherever the heck it needs to go to drop off all the stuff now that doesn't seem like a lot but i actually don't have a design for a lumber mill yet because i'm just you know flying by the seat of my pants and these pants are so cool thanks again dust so i have to design and build a lumber mill on the fly and then also do all the train track moving, which is just difficult. It's just, it's just difficult. And all this that I made, I gotta tear on. Anyways, now let's, let's get to work. Uh, I'll probably procrastinate by beautifying this a little bit more. And then actually get to work. <laughs> okay, that, um, that, that platform might be too big. <laughs> Yeah, I was kind of going for, like, you know, having the, the structural support logs be, you know, two by two, just to make them look like, yeah, there's a, there's a big logging camp supported, I don't, I don't know what's happening to me right now. But I think I made the platform just a little too big, and these might be part of that issue, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shave it down, uh, gosh, like three this way and maybe two or so this way. I, I gotta, I gotta count, I gotta count blocks because I don't remember how many blocks I put in between everything. Oh, and I got the, the train track move, so it just comes down a little bit over here, and then swings around this way. I did not think I was gonna make this work, but it looks like it will work, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and if I do shave this down just a little bit, yeah, it should run uh, right next to the platform, which is super dope. Anyways, yeah, let me let me shave this down a little, and we'll, we'll I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, I think this platform is way better. It's uh, the right size, it's not too overbearing, and I do like the 2x2 two two spruce pillars for support, but I want to talk to you guys about something, because uh, I'm a little offended, I'm a little upset that you guys didn't mention anything, uh, I'm kinda, I'm kinda, you know, it just it doesn't seem right that you're gonna keep information that is this important from me. I forgot that Cherry exists. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm upset that nobody told me that Cherry exists. <laughs> so... Whoops. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I could I could probably throw it over here, but Cherry... Cherry's big. Cherry make big wood. I can move this forward just a little bit, probably, and stick it right there. I think what I'm gonna do instead is farm it down to the barn. Because we head over in this direction. You remember I kind of made this uh, to hold up our train tracks here. And I have zero plans for this area whatsoever. And I'm already doing pretty much all of the farming stuff that I want to do on the inside of the barn. So I might turn this into like a cutesy little adorable cherry thing. <laughs> cherry grove. Grove? Maybe grove. Maybe try to find some rabbits or something. And uh, we'll harvest our cherry wood in that little nook. And we'll, we can just throw it in the barn and have the, have the train pick it up as it goes. But uh, yeah. Um, whoops. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, what I've got going on here is I've got the planked spruce logs. I think this is going to make a really nice solid wall, kind of on one section. And then I want to toy with the idea of doing a spruce stockade fence wall as well. You can kind of see through it. It's just, it seems like it's a lot of spruce, so I might swap this out for an oak one. 
because I feel like that's gonna that's gonna look a little bit better. Let me actually tear this down, and uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of spruce loggage right here as a bit of a transition, and then I think the rest of this will turn into those stockade fences. And I might leave like a little section here that's open that you can walk out into the actual farm itself if you feel you need to. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the design we're going to go for. I'm going to break this up a little bit with some texturing as well. And then we're going to figure out what the heck we're going to do with the front too. <laughs> Along the front here, I might just throw these fences down. Uh, I, I will fill out most, if not all of it. Uh, because the train is going to be coming over here, so we're going to need like a big old awning where the train is going to come under this and pick up all the stuff. And I don't want anybody to walk into the tracks, because that'll hurt. I don't want people to get hurt. And then over on this side, we will continue this probably the whole way, and then maybe make a, another door over here or something, and just like connect a path over that way uh, to the to the gingerbread area. And then on this back wall, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. Uh, hmm. You know what, let me, let me get these walls all situated and then we'll, we'll come back to this one, see what we want to do here. You know what, it's, it's growing on me. It is... It is growing on me. It's, it's, I keep telling myself, every time I look, I'm like, it's so woody. <laughs> it's just, it's so much wood, and it's supposed to be. It's a lumber mill. There's supposed to be a lot of wood, so it's, it's growing on me. I like, these are just loud. These are super loud. I, I like how I broke it up here a little bit. I got this central pillar going on here. I may put another one here somewhere uh, just to break up all this stuff. I do really like this a lot. I think this looks really cool. It gives it a little bit of breathability. You can just walk right out into the farm. I do really like this a lot. We're going to keep that. And I also think this is perfect for, uh, you know, not killing ourselves on the train because that would be bad. Nobody wants to get herded by train. Uh, we're gonna have a door here, that's why this is open like this. Anyways, um, you know, I, I think at this point what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the train tracks where they're supposed to be going, uh, and it's not procrastinating on building, that's not it at all. And we are then going to figure out how the inside's gonna work, and then I think throw some sort of roof on top of it. Now, I wanna keep this open. And the reason I wanna keep this open is usually in a lumber mill, there's like a a channel, I guess? I guess it's a channel where you put log onto channel, uh, log gets pushed somehow through channel, and then there's a big old saw blade that's either going up and down and up and down, sawing the log, or a big circular one that's spinning around and saws the log in half, and then it just gets pushed out into a pile over here. And this will be the log pile, right? So I, I want to keep this as open as possible. I might throw, I don't know, something like that on there except do it correctly like that I'm, yay we did it uh i might do something like that just to make it not as wide open but no i want to keep this channel here tell me this is even one two three four it, it certainly is oh my gosh that's okay we can we can make it work well we got the train track connected so the train is now on its merry way again it should be dropping stuff off here pretty soon there we go yep i still need to figure out what's going on with the xp there uh, but yeah, it should be coming around the mountain when she comes over here. This is perfect. Uh, we have a little bit of an issue. The portable storage interface, I think that's what it is, is actually on this side, sideways. Uh, there is one that's up, right? But the the other one is, is sideways, uh, facing in that direction. So, we'll probably have to load the train from the top. Which isn't that big a deal. It's just not going to work the way I thought it was going to, but that's that's okay. I'm not super worried about it. Now, I think the way that it gets unloaded over here is through the side. Yes, okay. So the way it gets unloaded is through the side anyways. So that works perfectly over here. This I'm not super worried about either because this is going to be a quarry. So we can just have a bridge that goes right across the top of the quarry here. And the train will just run right along there anyways. We need to figure out what in the heck we're doing with the interior of this, and quickly, because I already had to cut off two productions of spruce, production pads, I guess is what I'll call them, of spruce and jungle, because these barrels are just so full. Uh, I, 
went over here and the spruce trees were just it was spruce log all over the place. It was spruce log apocalypse. So we need to figure out a storage system. I think we're just going to throw it on this back wall right here. And then uh, we'll probably have like a bunch of logs that are here getting ready to be chopped up into itty bitty pieces, you know, on the, the fake chopping machine over this way. And then out of those logs, we'll have the, what are those? Belts, belts that will just load up the train, uh, dump it right into the top of the train. We'll just hide it inside of a log pile. I think that'll look super duper great. And then just general, like, clutter. <laughs> you know me, I like my clutter. So, you know, we'll have a couple of carpentry benches and maybe some rotating saws, etc. Uh, just kind of scattered all over the place. And I still need to decorate this place too. Still lots to do, but I want to get on this storage issue uh, right quick because I think, I, I don't know if I actually can, but there might be a way that I can stop these guys from spinning if we're full over here. Just using, uh, we're about to get a hitch. Nope, there we go. Now look at all this just spilling all over the ground. Um, it's gonna, it's, it, I'm not really worried about the waste, to be honest. Um, I'm more worried about, uh, the, it lagging, <laughs> lagging the world out. Anyways, um, if I put threshold switches on these, I wonder if I can get these to stop spinning. There's another part of me that doesn't care and thinks I might just put void controllers on all of them. Yeah, let's do that. So the way this is going to work is underneath every single one of these bad boys right here, we are going to have a chute. And then into that chute, we are going to have... Ooh, I don't know if I can put a chute straight into a drawer controller, or a drawer controller slave at least. Let's find out, shall we? So if I put a drawer controller here, and I've got the drawer controller slave there, and I do this, this, and this, and now I gotta get in on this side over here, and I take this drawer, and I put it right there. Uh, if I put a chute here, is this going to connect and drop oak in here? It's got nowhere for the saplings to go. All right, let me, let me, let me, let me. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, that does, that does absolutely work. So we've got the saplings going on over here, and then things should dump right in. So that does work. All right, yeah, it's got no place for sticks, so we'll put sticks in there. Boom. Okay, that does work. So I can put a chute directly into the drawer controller slave. Things should dump out in there. I might want a smart chute, only because it can do a stack at a time. Uh, that's not really gonna matter for these gigantic, or these little trees, but I don't know if I want to take the saplings out as well. Hmm, here's my thought process, right? And why is it not grabbing everything? Oh, it has a spruce sapling in there for some reason. Oh, okay, that, I don't know why that happened, but that's okay. We just break that, replace it, and we should be good to go. So here's my thought with the saplings, right? Every time it chops a tree down, it should get loaded up with some saplings to replace. There is a chance, it's not a huge chance, but there is a chance that it'll chop a tree like here and then dump all the saplings. But there should be other saplings already planted. Should's the keyword. So I think we're just gonna dump all the saplings into drawers and then I'll come back and I'll check on it, which is which is totally gonna happen. I'm absolutely gonna do that. And if there's ever an issue, I can just manually replant if I need to. However, I'm glad that this system works. So now what we need to do is go under the build and find out where our hole is. There it is. And just run a ton of oak trim to all of these, all of these doohickeys. And that, I mean, that that's it. That's literally it. Yeah, see, here's here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna cut this tree, it's gonna dump everything in here, and then no saplings. And then after it dumps, cuts that tree, it's gonna spin around and dump everything in here, and it's not gonna have enough saplings to plant everything again. That is a problem. So I wonder if I set it up the same way the jungle one is set up, if we won't have that issue? because I haven't seen the jungle it, jungle one have an issue yet. Uh, I also cut back on this, because we have like 15,000 um, what is it? Uh, dark oak and like 10,000 of everything else. <laughs> so yeah, I wonder if I need to just swap the position on, on the, the, the non-cutty pads. And I haven't actually seen this thing grow 
yet. And I'm wondering if these can, uh, I mean, obviously they can, there's two propagules missing and I didn't pick those up. So obviously it is able to do that. I just really want the mangrove to work because I hate cutting mangrove down. <laughs> But I got these all lined up. They're not gonna stay here. We might actually do some some cutting up of stuff so we get planks and all that over here as well. I'm not really sure yet. Uh, and if we do, if we do do, if we do do that, I probably will only send off some logs to the house and not anything else, like none of, none of this or none of the planks or any of that sort of stuff. But at the same time, that kind of seems like what's the point? If I'm gonna make planks over here, have that be our main storage and be like, I don't have enough planks, so I gotta come over here and grab them. Like, what's the point in doing that? So this is probably gonna be our storage for this. I'm not 100% sure. But what I do need to do is make uh, void upgrades for these, probably void upgrades for the ones of the house. And I, I, don't, I don't care about throwing things out. I really don't. Uh, I could probably make it so these things shut off by themselves and I don't have to worry about just voiding things, but at the same time, I, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me. I'm the only one here. I'm the only one that's going to be using this stuff. And if I get... I, these all have emerald upgrades and they can hold over like 32,000 logs. I'm, I'm not going to use 32,000 <laughs> logs. It's just not going to happen. So I'm not worried about voiding them. It'll it'll be fine. What I am worried about is how I'm gonna decorate this place. I really have my work cut out for me here, so let's I guess start with decorating some stuff. Uh, we'll get a pile of logs over here uh, and do the do the whole sending things off. I also have to set up the the collection. What is that called? Train station as well. Uh, over at the house, so I got a lot of work to do. Let me get started and decorate we have yeah This is this is looking pretty good. I think I, I I really do enjoy this a lot I think the only thing that I want to do is potentially put like a little safety barrier here or something like that uh, That might work anyways uh, over here You know, we've got just a couple of tools a little garbage can and we've got some shelves and stuff We still have to put a couple of decorations out like lanterns and whatnot but we have all of our things arranged now. Just, you know, piles of wood all over the place. And these here, the um, polished oak planks, really look very good for sawdust. I like this a lot. Uh, we got a little, little pressed, pressed down on stuff, you know, as you do. <laughs> and we just, you know, I, I figured it's a, it's a wood mill. It's a lumber mill. There's got to be, like, tools and random stuff all over the place. And uh, over here, you know, we've got our big saw. Uh, so we've got our log that's going through that is getting cut by our big saw. Uh, that's going to be, you know, piled up into this just pile of clutter, <laughs> essentially, over here. And, as you can see, I got a little lever here. Uh, don't worry about the trapdoor nonsense. But the saw works. <laughs> the saw actually works. Uh, don't, ah, see, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that at home, kids. It's, uh, it's a bad idea. But, yeah, we can shut the... Uh, the saw, turn the saw on and off, uh, and it works out very, very well. Uh, so there's only a couple things left to do. We have to finish decorating this area. I'm probably going to put just like some random rocks and some grass, uh, some more foliage, maybe a couple of, of flowers, a couple of berry bushes, etc. in here, just to get this uh, squared away, you know, looking not desolate. <laughs> and then we need a roof on this guy. And I think what I'm going to do is have like a little tiny, let's head over this way. A little tiny sloping slab roof that goes up to about there-ish or something. And then, like, a big uh, open area um, held up by uh, a spruce, held up by fence posts. And then have, like, a little cap on top of it. And then fence posts over here. And then another little sloping um, slab roof that comes off on this end. And that will be our roof. We'll probably put a couple of, like, holdy, uppy bits. Uh, they're not called... You know, the, the things that go across, uh, they're not girders. The thing that go across that, like, hold them up, they're, they're wood beams. I don't, I don't know anything about architecture. I'm so bad at this. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll probably throw a couple of these in there. Yeah, I hate this already. I'm gonna take this down. You know, that's not too terrible. Just moving it over a little bit isn't bad. And then after the roof, the only other thing to do is set up the train schedule a little bit better. I have a, a train stop over here train station over here somewhere where is it oh it's right here there it is it's kind of hidden and I, I think it's in a good spot but essentially we could probably you know put the, the train stop wherever and rafters 
rafters. We could put all of the stuff that we need to put into the rafters uh, to have the arm come over out of the roof and just dump wood into the top of the train. So that honestly isn't that big a deal. And that should really be the last thing besides set setting up a train station over there to drop all the wood off, which honestly might already be set up. But let me go ahead and work on this roof and getting this decoration in and I'll get back to you guys with the train stuff. It's raining, I'm sorry. But here's what we've got going on so far for the roof. Now, I like this a lot. I've got this coming up to about here. This is totally Beardstone's roof that I'm absolutely stealing from his workshop or storage unit, so thanks, Beardy. <laughs> and then over here, I, st I started it as well, but let me tell you, this is very tedious. <laughs> it takes a long time, so I think what we're gonna try to do is blast it into existence. I might break so many things. Ah! I might break so many things here, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna try. We're gonna try. So we're gonna place this here. We're gonna put, I guess, this here, and then hit that. And I've already taken a, a thing of the other ones, so uh, do we just, I think we just put this in here, and this'll tell us what we need or something? Ooh, 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 okay. Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, I think I got it in the right spot. <laughs> Jeepers, this is way more difficult than it needs to be. But what do I do now? Do I, do I right click on this? I, I, I do that? No? Do I right click on there? Okay, I think I got it, and essentially all I'm gonna do is fill this barrel with framed blocks. I'm terrified that this thing is gonna delete the things that are in that area, so I wonder if there's a way that I can change how that works. Printer settings. There we go. Ooh, don't replace solid blocks. Replace solid with any. Skip missing blocks. It's definitely what I want. Yeah, I definitely don't want to replace solid blocks for sure. I think we're good to go. I mean, honestly, if anything gets deleted, it's going to be this top row, but I think because we did that, you know, protect entities thing, it should be okay. Let's just see what happens, I guess. And it appears to be going. That's okay. Uh, yeah, in no time flat, that is done. That took, I don't know, 10 seconds. <laughs> That's exaggeration, but oh my gosh. Uh, why have we not used this thing sooner? This thing is incredible. Oh, that's super dope. Okay, so now what we've got to do is put in all the blocks that are missing from here. I'm probably going to skip a couple because I think it's going to look really nice if some of these are missing. And then we got to work on the center of the roof as well. And then uh, I think this place will finally be done. All right, all right. so I put these in and... I really like this. Uh, the oak planks shavings, they look like wooden shingles, right? But with this pattern, it's so loud. <laughs> it's so loud. Oh, I wanted this to work so much, but I have to tear them out. It just doesn't work with these guys. I'm going to try regular oak planks and maybe, maybe break up the oak planks with a little bit of these guys. But right now, oh my gosh, these things are just so loud. I can't do it, but I do really like them as the trim for the dark oak. I think they look really good with that. Oh, by the way, I flattened all this out. Uh, <laughs> figured, you know, we got a couple of uh, factories that need to go in. Might as well just get that all flattened out and ready for the future. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and break all of these out of here. I'm glad that I tried this because I've been thinking about using these for a roof for a long time, and it's just, it doesn't work. Uh, they're too loud, especially in this pattern, so I'm gonna grab some regular planks, regular oak planks, and maybe a couple of brick bonded, because I really love the way these look, and we'll plug those in and see if that works any better. And you know what? I'm gonna call that done. I, th I think I think we're set here. I think, uh, I think we're all good. I just want to make sure that Crazy Monkey's not gonna run me over. But yeah, I, I, I finally got the whole thing built, and I really really like it a lot. So uh, yeah, we did a little bit of decoration outside. I might do a little more. I might put some bushes and stuff that are growing up the side here. But yeah, I love the, the little crates everywhere. And I, I think I might have gone over this, but we have a, a cutesy little camp. We'll sit on camp thingy. Let me actually go in the front door here. We go ahead and open the door and we just have more clutter. Always clutter, 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 clutter. And our big cutter thing and I've added, you know, a couple of cups just in case we get thirsty and you know, just some plants. Uh, we got some lighting around, which would be really nice because it actually is getting dark right now. And yeah, I'm just, I'm absolutely loving the way that this place turned out. It's super compact and, and super, there goes our, our crazy train. 
uh, super compact and I just I really adore it. And there is a ladder up here that will take you upstairs to absolute nothingness. <laughs> oh, and I'm using these hanging cobwebs from Chip. They're super cool. But yeah, I, I didn't actually end up putting anything up here. We've got space in case we need it for anything in the future. I'm not really sure what we'll throw up there. However, we have things, uh, a place to throw things. Let's go ahead and take a little nip nap and I'll take you around. I, I think I went over all of this already. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize that uh, moss turns into puzzle when a giant spruce tree grows next to it. Oh, that's good to know. But I went around and I added a little bit more foliage. So I, I think, you know, the place is really just coming together. It really just looks overgrown and and kind of disgusting and wonderful. I love it so much. These propagules just don't stay. No, I'm super happy with this build. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments, what do you think about it? The only thing we have left to do is hook up the train, and I think I'm gonna have to go underground for that. I think I'm gonna have to put stations underground and change the item interface so it is facing down this way instead of up because if I were to face it up, I would have to put something in the ceiling that's coming out this way, and that would just look really weird. <laughs> like, even the way this is lined up, I just, I think it would look too strange. So we're gonna have to steal the monkey's schedule and uh, have the things underground here. Oh, and I had to move the train out a block as well because the train was running into the roof and now it's just skirting the edge there. So what I'll do off camera is I will have item interfaces that will probably have multiple train stations for each individual piece of wood. So that way it can pick up all the different pieces of wood and bring them over to the house. But that is unfortunately all the time that I have for today. Thank you so much everybody for coming on this journey with me. Once again, I appreciate all of you so very much, especially my patrons patrons, Wraith, and Dusk. You're so wonderful people. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate you guys so much. Anyways, folks, I think we're still looking for a name for this area, so if you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments. And until next time, everybody, we'll see you on in the next video. Bye!